Hello and welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you are so inclined. In today's video, we're taking a look at this, the Razer Nari Wireless. Now this is the first Razer product that will be reviewed on this channel, which is surprising because I do have quite a bit of Razer's peripherals. Anyway, it's middle of the road for the Nari range, this. It doesn't have the haptic feedback or the head vibrator, as I like to call it, of the uh, Nari Ultimate. And it's definitely a bit better than the Essentials. Better drivers, better microphone, things like that. Now first impressions of these things is that they're massive. I feel like I'm on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, HMS Queen Elizabeth, giving it all the uh, the jazz. I'm not military. Anyway, um, I think we'll jump in and give the mic a bit of a test, and then we'll have a proper look at all of the design and the features and whatnot, and why it is that people are such big fans of Razer. So here we are with the mic test. As you can see, it's, it's not bad. To be fair, if you were just gaming, I wouldn't consider it to be an issue with your friends. I'm sure everyone could understand you perfectly well. I definitely wouldn't stream with it though. I don't think that this microphone is, it's nowhere near as good for me as the Clearcast mic that SteelSeries use on their headsets and it's definitely not a patch on the Corsair Virtuoso. I think we'll move on and do a bit of an audio test. We'll jump onto a set of Corsair and have a bit of that. I'll continue to use this mic for any sort of narration while we're doing that and then we'll uh, come back and take a look at the features and the build quality of the headset. Well here we are with the audio test everyone. Silverstone in the Ferrari 458 again. This should give the THX spatial sound a run for its money. Here we go. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Do get good directional sound and the sound stage is pretty good behind though is a bit dull it doesn't let you know if they're behind and to the right or behind and to the left it's just behind but it's not a bad implementation of it I'm quite happy with that I'm quite happy with that so looking at the headset itself already like the Arctis 7 and some of the other Steel Series headsets I do like the ski goggle approach, however this is slightly different. This is more, I, I suppose I'd describe it as suspension, and you can't change the size. Uh, these bits here don't actually move, they just swivel. The actual mechanism is right there, it just stretches and adjusts to your head, and they are remarkably comfortable. The actual ear cups themselves, they have two sets of material on it. You do have this sort of leverette around the outside of the ear cup, and then on the surface that meets your skin, it's sort of a a weird suede microfiber almost and it does keep your ears remarkably cool and another thing to point out these are made with glasses in mind there is a bit of a divot you can't see it here but you can kind of feel it just on the uh, the memory foam of the ear cup itself for your glasses to slot through which is remarkably good of you Razer I do like that you've definitely thought of all gamers not just those with perfect sight now in terms of the build quality it feels very strong. These lightweight aluminium bands around the top, that I, it's a good idea to take the middle clip out. You don't need that additional weight. And I do like that you have the, uh, the black on black Razer logo embossed across the top. Not that you'll be able to see it when you're wearing it, but they do feel quite solid at this point. Now, that fades a little as we get further down to the actual speaker housing or the driver housing, I suppose, but look at the size of it. If they'd actually made this from solid aluminium, it would have weighed so much, it'd have been so uncomfortable. So I do understand the plasticky part of it. Now they have tried to make it look a bit cool, I think, which sadly takes away from the styling for me with these, with them being so remarkably big. Now they do have a light on the side, I don't have it turned on because I literally went into Synapse and turned it off. That's the way to do it. We will have a look at Synapse and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Now, the reason I did that, the battery life on these is it'll give you a good 18 to 20 hours as the standard wireless headsets would. However, if you turn the RGB on, you will reduce that somewhat, a good few hours. And I, I'm not sure about you, but I don't charge my headset every time I stop using it. I just hang it over the top of my monitor. So like I said, we'll have a quick look at the Razer Synapse software and see what we can do. I am in fact using the mic through the headset again for this bit just to, uh, well I thought I might as well. So let's have a quick look at it. This should also give an indication as well as the uh, the volume of the keys when you're pressing them down. So it's a two in one test. I am in fact using uh, their cherry red keys. It's the Steel Series. I think it's the Apex 7. 
and they are mechanical switches. But anyway, you're greeted with this screen when you go into the uh, the Synapse software. Now all we want obviously is the headset because that's what we've been looking at. And these are your um, specialization modes, so just standard stereo. Then you've got your, your surround, provides accurate positional audio with eight virtual speakers. That's virtual speakers, there are only two speakers in these. And game mode, which is effectively cheaty mode. So basically what this does is reduce the, the low end, so the, the low bass tone, so it does explosions, things like that. You can still hear footsteps around you on things like Warzone while there's explosions going off. Cheaty mode is the real, the real name of that. Anyway, moving, moving swiftly through, we have the mixer. And in here you can uh, set all your different things, so for your Discord and for OBS, which I am in fact recording through OBS, and again with no filters on the mic whatsoever. Enhancement, just bass boost, I wouldn't mess with these. I had a quick go and it made it kind of, quite kind of bad. I don't even know how to explain it. The sound normalization seemed to just cut out bits of words that I was saying. It all sounded very weird. I did turn voice clarity up, just because it seemed like I should. I don't really know what it does. I wouldn't recommend doing it. I was just mucking around. Anyway, EQ. Now as you can see, this is the standard game mode where it's dropped off those low end, um, actual really heavy bass tones and it goes into what's known as like a bit of a V-shape. Now you can just cycle through them, so default which is just a flat tone. You've got movie, usually that's quite rich if you're playing a single player game, things like that, and for listening to music. They're not that great for listening to music. I give it a bit of a go and I, but to be fair I have nice expensive headphones, so you know, no comparison really. Moving on, I'll leave that back on game. Moving on, so we've got the mic settings, and here we go. So the mic volume, it was automatically set at 75, and I have in fact left it there. And then you've got mic sensitivity. Now, I'm not, I left it at medium. I'll let you judge for yourself. It should be changing as I'm actually moving it around on here anyway for the recording, but I'll keep it at 50, because I just, it sounded best there for me. Now, mic monitoring, side tone, basically. I do ho always have that on. For games where it's very, very loud and I'm speaking, I prefer if I can still hear myself talk while I'm talking to my friends. I know it's very strange. I just love the sound of my own voice, surely. Um, anyway, onto the lighting. As I said earlier, I turned mine off. This is how you do it. You just go into lighting um, and just turn brightness fully off, and that will get rid of the RGB. I'm sure it's popping up green now on the side of my head, but I will turn that back off again for the sake of battery, which is here where we are. So. I've got this set, so the uh, the headset itself will automatically turn off after 15 minutes of use, if of non-use, sorry, just to save that power, which is very, very good for me. While we're here, I may as well do a bit of a, a typing test. Let's see what it sounds like. And there we are. Anyway. We'll get back to the uh, discussion about what's on the actual headset itself. Now, in terms of the microphone as well, it's a bit also like the Steel Series headsets that it does retract. Now, I'm not going to say that they're copying Steel Series in any way. I don't think either of these two businesses, Razer nor Steel Series, came up with this design. But this is a very good implementation of it. It feels more solid and better put together than the Steel Series ones, to be fair. And it does have the red LED when you put the mic on mute. Now, on that, with the control of the headset itself. It's the standard sort of stuff. You've got the power switch here. You have a game to chat mixer, which I absolutely adore. I've mentioned this in previous videos. This is a must have feature for any headset, especially any that are costing more than a hundred pounds. And then you have your mute switch here, which it's just a little clip. And as I said, it does turn the end of this on. I don't have the headset powered on right now. On the other side, we've just got the volume. It's not an infinity wheel or anything like that. There is a top to it, there is a bottom. Now this is where it gets really interesting for me, and I genuinely, genuinely do appreciate this from Razer. The USB dongle for the wireless is here, it's just housed in the headset, so if you are going anywhere and you're taking this with you, you will not have to lose this, because it's nicely stored right here. Thank you again, Razer. Some of the features on this are definitely with gamers in mind. You couldn't possibly leave your house wearing these. I wouldn't go outside, I definitely wouldn't use these as headphones. It, it's just wrong. They're too big, they're too big. But if you're in your own home, who cares? No one gets to see it, which is why, again, I don't understand the RGB. If you can't see it, why do you care? But what else does this come with? So we have this, micro USB. Again, I get that that's all the rage these days, but you can't charge as quickly as you can with Type-C. And if you are paying 150 pounds for this, that's, I would have expected a Type-C. It starts to irritate me a little bit, but it is a nice cable. Now you can play and charge at the same time. However, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It does 
it gets a bit rocky with the charging, to be perfectly honest. And then we get this. The good old fashioned three and a half mil jack. I'm not sure what it is in inches for my American friends that are watching, but it is uh, a four, four pole jack, which is all really good. You can just plug this into your computer and go or into your uh, audio interface like I do sometimes. And the audio is a bit stronger. Now in terms of the wireless range, it's the same as all of the others in this price range. There's no difference. But there we are, the headset. I like it, I really do. <clears throat> I wasn't sure I would just because of the sheer size and girth of the ear cups, but the audio itself is rather good. I think the settings you can change in Synapse as we looked at earlier is quite good as well. So yeah, there we are. A definite recommend from me, just for sheer comfort. Um, I will run a comparison with them at some point, but I do need to figure out what the price range of these actually is, as I mentioned earlier. On Amazon, it's all over the place. Now, if you did like this video and want more content like this, don't forget to click on the subscribe button just below and hit the notification bell also. Now, I will be getting a 3080 uh, as soon as I could possibly get my hands on one, and there will be a few videos about that so we can compare it to the 2080, the 2080 Super, and the 2080 Ti, just to see if the rumours and the speculation is true about this doubling of performance, because I'm not overly sure just yet, but we're going to be testing that. So don't forget to subscribe. But thank you very much for watching, everyone, and do have a lovely, lovely evening.